This is an update and discussion on the Oroville Dam, uh, March 9th, 2017, Thursday. Um, as most people know, the on, on February 12th, um, there was an emergency evacuation order issued for almost 200,000 people below the Oroville Dam uh, as they felt at that point that there was going to be an imminent collapse of the emergency spillway, which had to, which was activated for the first time in the history of the dam as a result of uh, certainly the, the failure of the primary spillway, but also unprecedented rain and snowpack um, in the Sierras and generally throughout California through, through January. Uh, it was very much exacerbated when the um, so-called Pineapple Express proceeded to dump, you know, 8, 10, 12 inches of rain on even some of the highest areas in the Sierra Nevada, which um, at that point, some of them had three, four, or five hundred inches of snow to, for, to the season to that to, to date. So uh, that that snow is, is is and was very, very, very water heavy snow in a lot of locations. So, anyways, uh, bringing us up to today, they managed to bring the the lake down over the last uh, three or four weeks to um, something as low I think as about eight hundred and thirty five feet. Um, and what they've been, they had just been running the, um, the damaged primary spillway. They were finally able to stop it once the, that lake level got down that, you know, to that, to those levels. And of course it revealed some pretty astounding damage to it. It's, um, a, a number of people I think are saying it's just not going to be usable anytime too soon. So they had to, um, they're now, they, they've shored it up as best they can. They're, they're doing all sorts of really what have to be considered Herculean efforts to try and shore this thing up. But I, I wanted to bring up today where I see the real issue with this dam. And it's, it's that, it's at the, um, it would be the north end, I think, of the um, emergency spillway where it meets the parking lot. Because you can see that all along, that's where the problem has been. You can see on the 12th that that's what was happening uh, you could see that the water was going right where the edge of the of the the last you know bit of the um, emergency spillway wall was, where it meets the parking lot there, and you could see the erosion happening. You can see it in, in the photos that day. You can see it afterwards that that river ran down there, and the flow I don't think was all that great through there. But what I'm pretty sure they were real worried that that was going to start undercutting and eventually, you know, eat into um, you know, between there, and then you, you've got a breach on that end, and there's absolutely nothing they could have done about it. So that's probably where the gist of the, you know, the whole uh, thrust of, of, the, of the need to do the emergency evacuation was. So that brings us up to today. Um, as of today, the, the lake this morning, um, I think, is, is pushing that uh, 860 mark where they, they, feel, they feel they're going to have to get the... Um, emergency, I mean, the, sorry, the primary spillway back in some form of operation, which, you know, when you look at the damage after this thing has stopped, it's, they're playing with dynamite. I mean, the erosion and that's eating through, it, they're showing now that the, that the bedrock there is sort of inconsistent. So the bottom line is that that's kind of, kind of real concerning that they're going to have to turn that back on. Now, the good side is that they have diligently worked to clear that the uh, the uh, diversion channel, I guess they call it, so that the um, the power plant you can get 50, you can, they can get I think up to uh, fifteen thousand cfs going through the power plant, which would be an, you know which would be another relief on the system overall. But as far as I can see, ultimately, unless they have a really miraculously sedate, cool um extended spring they're going to have that that emergency spillway is going to get used again and if it does they're going to have the same scenario even though they patched it up the water's going to go up it's going to overwhelm that parking lot area which it, it very easily did and it um you know it, it illustrates the the primary design flaw of this dam and they really just needed to make that that spillway you know maybe 10 8 10 12 feet lower so that it was much below the level of that parking lot because I, I guarantee you they never once said well you know that parking lot could be underwater someday and even even on the 12th when I got into a discussion with a, a gentleman a geologist from a DWR who I think was doing damage control on Facebook you know, he was saying well the, the parking lot's expendable and I thought well no the parking lot's not really expendable if it provides the the way that the, the, your upper you know, that that spillway gets breached so 
that area is the problem. So um, I'll get into what I think needs to be done about that. All right, so bef before I get into this um, this radical, crazy-ass um, design modification fix that I'm going to propose, um, I'm going to get back into that, the, the Sierra snowpack, because that's, you know, that is far and away the X factor here. Um, this is, um, the, the the image now that's, that's up is the, is of, um, from, I think, weatherstreet.com. It shows the, you know, the central and northern California um, Sierra snowpack, you know, today, basically, as of today, March 9th. And you can see it's it's essentially um, a water a water time bomb up above all these different dam systems and watersheds and levees and stuff. And it's you know I can't even imagine it, that better not let go in a hurry. Hopefully California will not have one of its you know epic um, last week in March or first week in April heat waves because that would really be bad news. But so this, getting back to the dam and what they need to do, because there's going to be constant pressure on this thing, regardless if they can, they're going to have to deal with that primary spillway, you know, once there's a relatively stable um, weather later on, you know, the warm part of the year, summer part of the year, they're going to have to deal with it. But it seems doubtful to me that they're going to be able to repair that properly. You know, when you look at the damage, it's, it's astounding. So what I think that they really need to do is they need to get, you know, try look look for the you know the biggest contractor people on, on the planet, people experts for concrete, and look into cutting a notch on the right hand side of that emergency spillway, right up near the observation deck there. Maybe I don't know as wide as the as the primary spillway, you know whatever ten fifteen uh, however many feet deep they they can figure out would be would would significantly keep the water away from that other end of the emergency spillway because they absolutely have to do that and it's i understand it be, might be a bit of a challenge but it's 2017 and you know you got to figure that that with that kind of life and property and um you know uh, that overall produce overall effect on the economy at stake here that they would they would look into to, to that solution because it's to me I don't see a way out of it if they if they have to use that emergency spillway even with all the lovely patching that they've done it's going to do the same thing it's going to go up there water's going to over overwhelm that parking lot and it's going to find its way around there and eventually you're going to have a, a real sticky situation again and maybe with no other way out at that point so that's my idea um, you know get these whether it's feasible I don't really know I've, I've done a little bit of research and there seems to be people out there who can cut concrete I don't know how pretty fairly thick I didn't really I wasn't able to get a good gauge of what how thick it was but supposedly an inch an hour or I mean an inch a minute which would be a pretty good rate if you can you know, you do that in a couple of days you'd have that notch to have to figure out the rebar where the rebar is and was but you know I think at this point it's it's worth at least exploring it as a feasibility so anyways there's my idea um, hope you like the video um, give me a shout out thanks